Hello, my name is Dr. Nelson uh, I'm going to talk to you about the interventions that are commonly reported and widely canvassed for on social media about the cure of hepatitis. I think that it is high time someone spoke and uh, being a specialist uh, in liver diseases, I think it is time to speak up. Are uh, herbs effective for the treatment of hepatitis B? I will, before I go on, please, I would invite you to subscribe to my channel and so you can have more videos that will follow in this regard. But suffice to say that I will take you through a scenario, then I will give that answer at the end of this scenario. When I grew up as a child, and as when I was a child rather, and, um, and in the village I grew up, there was a common practice and a belief that if you had hepatitis or jaundice, because at that time they didn't know what the diagnosis was, but if your eyes turned and become yellow uh, and you needed to get some treatment, they would give you some cubicane and certain uh, concoctions that are produced in some calabashes and you would drink. And it is assumed that when if you got well, it cured you. If you did not, then of course nobody reports about the fact that you died from the jaundice thing. But of course, it was by chance some people recovered, some died. I do remember losing a friend as well to this kind of thing. Uh, clearly, there is a way we actually go through medical science in deciding whether an intervention is effective intervention for a disease or not. The first level of uh, evidence is uh, we call those case reports. In other words, single cases will be reported by a physician who is doing some research and who will then say that that intervention is effective. Okay? Now, that's a very low level of evidence. The second one is case series. Here, an aggregate of a few cases uh, is reported within one literature. And that... Uh, the, outcomes of all the observations will be put together as a common factor. That is a second level of evidence that may attribute some effect of the intervention to a disease, in this case hepatitis B. The third level is we call those case control studies. Here you have those who have the hepatitis and may have died from it, and those who did not die. And then you look backwards as to what f things they did that led to them getting better and or dying. That is the third level, which is still intermediate. Now, one of the highest levels is called cohort studies. Here, you have two groups of people. The one group is the one that you would have given the intervention. In this case, if we think it's HAPS, you're going to give and the second group is the one that you actually think about not giving the intervention so that you follow them up and see what happens after a duration of time, which is that duration is actually defined based on some scientific evidence of the natural history of the disease itself. The last level, or near to the last level rather, is uh, when all of the aggregates of case controls or cohort studies and all the studies together uh, from across the world is brought into a single dynamic report that then uh, creates a forest plot, giving ideas as to the outcomes of all the interventions or the experiments done in different regions, and to identify whether the factor being considered, in this case herbs for hepatitis B, is actually uh, Uniform. In other words, are uh, the researchers identifying that this intervention is good enough to cure hepatitis B? Now, that that is how science operates, and that's how we as humans have actually come to trust the interventions that are available to us. And it's actually very reassuring that if you're going to the pharmacy store to get a pen relief medication, you know that that medication has been researched and has been found to be effective. 
and you're confident that you're not going to do any harm to your body even if you are going to do the harm you know what harm it is and you know how to recognize that you need to stop the intervention now what i find as the major problem that people have when it comes to the concept of herbs that many advocate for cure of hepatitis is that they just bring a telephone number of someone and start advertising the person and claiming that they are curers of hepatitis B. They actually don't even mention hepatitis B. Some are bold enough to mention hepatitis B, but they don't even say a lot because sometimes they will say herbs simplex. Sometimes it's hepatitis and there are several types. They have no basic knowledge of what the viruses cause and how the natural history would be like. They don't even know those who may even clear the virus even if there was no intervention and so on and so forth. They end up pushing people to part with their funds, money, heart and resources to their own accounts. And while they are getting rich and smiling away with money, the people, that is their victims, are struggling. Please, guys, be wise. There are lots to do and there are good evidence of activities of available interventions for hepatitis B. All you need is just access healthcare from authentic persons and personnel. And that is your insurance. Thank you very much. And please don't forget, subscribe to my channel. And I will be sure to provide contents that will support your health in the appropriate way. Stay away from drugs. Stay away from trouble. Move away from alcohol. Thank you. Bye-bye.